Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn and here we are with another mod roundup in Fallout 4. This is my Mechanist's Lair, I'm in the middle of working on it. I would be playing Fallout 4 Contraptions right now, but there's a download delay for North America on Steam. So instead I'm going to shoot this mod review and today the first one on the list is Warehouse Shelves for Components and Ammo by uh, Cartman1975. Take a look at this awesome mod. I gotta tell you, sometimes the serendipity of mod authors surprises me. I'm in the middle of working on my Mechanist's Lair, which is this huge warehouse sort of thing. I'm saving it for contraptions. I'm gonna have all sorts of contraptions. And lo and behold, this mod comes out perfect timing for me to set up all of these really cool shelving units filled with components. The way it works is uh, you set down a shelf and I'll show you exactly how it works. You open up your uh, workshop, you go over to, uh, to furniture, and then there's an entirely new category called warehouse. First item on the lift list is shelf, and you can place this huge, huge, absolutely huge shelf. Um, once you place it, you can put in a bunch of really cool components. Here's some copper, here's a bunch of warehouse acid, here's some adhesive. Look, look at all that adhesive. And uh, you can even choose from a variety of different weapon palettes. There's a fat man crate, and uh, there's some liberty bombs. Looks like the, looks like the bombs clip with, um, with, the, with the shelf. But it's, you don't have to use them for the shelf. You can put them down there. So you could stack a whole bunch of these side by side if you wanted to. It also comes with these wonderful carts filled with all sorts of crafting components. This looks like uh, brick or wood. Uh, I've got some glass here. I've got some more glass here. Fiberglass. There's, there's my wood. What is this? Is that cork? Yeah, you know, I don't really know. Maybe that's cement. Anyway, you can put down these great little uh, tubs of components here that just make a warehouse look absolutely sweet. Let me change my field of view here so that you can get a better look at some of these items. There's some aluminum, there's some steel right there, bags of cement, rolled up leather, nuclear material, oil and gasoline, stacks of cork, we've got uh, ballistic fiber, we've got fiber optics, we've got rubber, plastic, circuitry. I mean, he's got literally almost every single item that, that you can scrap or find in the world available on a pallet for you to decorate your settlement with. So uh, an incredibly cool and useful mod that I've been waiting for for a very long time came out just in time for my Mechanist's Lair build. So thank you very much to Cartman 1975. Next on the list is Your Custom Flag by Drag10. <laughs> this mod allows you to create your own customized flags in your settlement. The flags will appear, appear in your decorations, wall decorations, flag section. So here's my Miniman flag, railroad flag, US flag, and here is my custom flag. And there you go. Look, I've got a, a nice picture of a lady and a man walking across the street. Now, obviously, I didn't make this flag. This is the default flag that comes with the mod. You can kind of detect a Minuteman embossing in there. That actually might be due to another texture mod I have installed. You probably won't see that on yours. But anyway, the glory of this mod is that you can customize the flag to have any kind of icon you want. Now, it does require Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop. So for those of you unfamiliar with Photoshop or who do not have it, uh, this is gonna be less useful for you. But for those of you who are in college or whom are students, you can usually get Photoshop from Adobe for an incredibly low price. That's how I got, uh, that's how I first got Photoshop when I was learning how to use it for like $200. It was super cheap uh, compared to what it is full price retail. And another thing you're going to need to get this to work is you're going to need to have a DDS plugin installed. Now the mod author links to one that works with NVIDIA drivers. I unfortunately use AMD drivers, so I use the Intel Works DDS plugin and I'll be sure to link to that in the description. But the way this works is uh, you can put any icon you want over the flag. There are two portions of the flag. The top and the bottom. And the mod author has kindly given us these nice guides, which are these light blue lines, to show us how to center the icon. So I found this icon online 
and uh, it's Creative Commons license, so I'm not violating any copyright by using it. And boy, that's a cool little icon, so I figure I'm going to use this for my flag. I'll show you how to do it. Now, it doesn't look really good black against this dark green color, so let's go ahead and rasterize the layer. Right-click on the layer, go to Rasterize Layer, and now let's go to Blending Options. Let's go to Color Overlay, and let's choose White. Make sure your opacity is set to 100%. So there we go. I've got my nice icon. Now let's resize it. So select the layer, hold control, press T, and then drag this until you get it around to the size that you want. You see this little um, circle in the middle of this layer? I'm going to put that directly in the crosshairs of this blue layer to make sure that it is centered. Let's duplicate this layer. I right click on it, go to duplicate. Press V to make sure that you've got your pointer selected. Hold shift and drag down until it snaps right into place over the second layer. And there you go, we've got these nice dark uh, dark white symbols. Now you see, you can see the man and woman layers underneath and they actually have a little bit of texture. And the reason for that is because they are underneath this shadow layer. So we need to select both of these icons that we just created and we need to drag them down until they are in the same spot as the previous symbols. Then we can just click the little eye icon next to the layers to turn off the old layers and bingo bango bongo we've got this classy little flag symbol right there. Now the flag is this kind of green color and that's fine um, but some of us might not want a green color for our flag. Now the author of this mod made it really easy for us. He included a layer in here called hue and saturation and the way to do this is just double click on the little color palette icon and that brings up this hue and saturation properties list and you can drag things around until you get it the way you like. So you can, this is a really super highly saturated flag. So that's going to be for really bright. This is black and white. That's less saturation. Let's find a nice middle ground there. And then we can choose a different hue that we want. Um, no, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. Let's try for like a a rust red kind of color. Yeah, that's nice. And maybe pop up the saturation just a little bit. Oh man, I like that. That looks good. So I like the color there. Uh, now the default color without the hue and saturation adjustment layer is this sort of uh, burgundy red, sort of like a, a wine red, but I want mine to be a little bit more rusty. So I use the hue and saturation layer to make mine a little bit more rusty. Now that we have the flag exactly the way we want, it's time to save it. So let's go to file, save as, and uh, you're going to want to make sure that you save as type DDS. So because I'm using the Intel TextureWorks plugin, that's the one I'm going to choose. If you have the NVIDIA plugin installed, you'll choose the one that says NVIDIA, but the file name will say .DDS. That's the entire point. And then you're going to want to overwrite the 1dr underscore yws underscore flago1.dds file that's installed in your Fallout 4 directory. Now, as you can see, I'm still in my downloads directory, so I'm going to navigate to the installation of my Fallout 4 data textures, your ws, and then 1dr underscore yws underscore flago1.dds. Click save. It's going to ask you if you want to replace it. Click yes. And then here's the uh, menu that pops up for the Intel TextureWorks plugin. Yours might not have it. Uh, you're going to want to choose no compression because you want this to be a, the highest resolution as possible. Uh, it's going to ask you if you want MIP maps. Choose auto generate. This is going to auto generate MIP maps so that uh, it's going to work on a variety of different screen resolutions. And that's it. You don't need to choose any colors. Click OK. And you're good to go. Let's go back to the game. Now that we're back in the game, let's go ahead and uh, find a blank wall and load up our flag. Oh, and look at that majesty. Oh, I can feel the class drenching over me. Wow, the uh, wow, that sounded horrible. I'm so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't mean for it. Never mind. Um, the, you can see the Minuteman logo kind of slightly embossed in there, and that's my own fault. I have another mod installed that's placing this texture on top of it. You won't see that unless you have the same mod installed, so yours will be without that sort of overlay. But look at that. Look at how wonderful that is. Oh, man. I'm so thrilled with how that looked. Uh, again, sorry about the class drenching thing. That was, that was unfortunate. 
Next on the list is Your Custom Posters by Dragton, the exact same author. He created a mod just like his flag mod, but for posters. So let's show you how to make your own poster. It works just like his other mod. He gives you this uh, Photoshop file with all of these rectangles that represent each of the different posters. Now, um, I've already done all of them except one. All of the rectangles look like this one in the middle, the blue one that says Poster H. So I'll show you how to do this. You basically go into the right-hand side, you see all of the different layers, open up the folder that says Poster H, and you see that there's Layer 20, which is this icon. We'll turn it off. You see that the handicap sign goes away, turn it back on, it appears back on, and then uh, this text layer that says Poster H. Well, I want to put some sort of um, propaganda poster from World War I. You can see I've got all these wonderful World War I propaganda posters. So I found a Creative Commons um, poster that I am free and legal to use because it's in the public domain. I copy it. And then um, it's on my clipboard, and so I'm going to go over to Photoshop, I'm going to select the blue layer, and then Control v That pastes it into my document. Then I do Control t to transform it. I hold Shift, I grab the left-hand corner, and I drag. This resizes it slowly over time, because this was a really large file. Until it is about the size I need, then I hold Alt and scroll my scroll bar to zoom in. And then I kind of align it with the corner there, it kind of snaps. Then I hold Shift, drag it until I meet the top there. And then I click the check mark. Now, <clears throat> you want to make sure that it matches the size of the paper. So that's why we place this layer right above the blue layer. Right click on the layer, choose Create Clipping Mask. And you can see that it wraps around the original uh, origin of the poster and then just use your arrow keys to move it to where you want it so that the text is centered. Finally, let's turn off the text layer, turn off the icon layer, zoom out and bingo! We've got another wonderful World War One propaganda poster. Let's save this. So we're going to save it exactly the same way. You need to have the plugin installed. Go to File, Save As, and then navigate to your Fallout 4 directory. Go to Data, Textures, scroll all the way down to your WS, make sure you choose the Intel TextureWorks.dds, and then overwrite 1dr underscore yws underscore posters dot dds, click save, click yes to replace it, and then do the exact same settings, texture type color, compression none, 32, MIP maps, auto generate, click OK, and now let's go to the game. Back in the game, let's go to our signs. So go to decorations, wall decoration, signs, and look at that. All of our wonderful World War I <laughs> propaganda posters show up exactly as we created them. There are four large ones and then uh, six smaller ones. And you just place them on the wall exactly as you made them. Now the Photoshop file comes with a dirt and grime layer to make it look a little dusty. And uh, you can alter these any way you want. You could uh, put in a different grime layer so that each one is completely different. As you can see, the speckled water on that one is exactly the same as the speckled water on that one. So the creativity is up to you. You could alter these in any way you saw it, you see fit to make sure each of these is individual. And another thing is that these have extremely straight edges. They don't look like they've uh, lasted 200 years since the apocalypse. So what you could do is you could find a base layer that isn't a perfect blue rectangle and instead find one online that's kind of torn and ratty and use that as your base layer and then clip this image to that, create a clipping mask of that ratty layer so that they don't all look perfectly straight. But uh, you can experiment with it. You can tinker with each one and make posters that are exactly as you see fit, that are uh, the way that you want your Fallout gameplay to work. So there you go. Um, I realized that both of those last two mods are a little complicated for, for, for most players, but you know what? Um, it's stuff like this that gets you introduced to modding, and hey, by the time you finish this, you've created your own flag, you've created your own posters. You, sir, are a mod author. You could release it on the Nexus or on Bethesda.net or something like that. So uh, lots of fun. Great mod, Drag10. Uh, thank you so much for your creativity. And that's it for this week. Let me know what you thought about these mods in the comments below. And be sure to stay tuned for more Fallout 4, Far Harbor, and Contraptions content. Thank you so much for subscribing, and I'll see you soon.